yet to another um, video on ECG. So we are continuing with our approach to an ECG. Okay, so like I've been saying um, ever since we started with, um, with this series that one method that works for me that I find easy, uh, most people do not use this method, but I find it easy, it always works. So this is the method I'm, I'm, I'm showing to you guys. So like I said, what you wanna do when you get that strip, the first thing is the rhythm and what do i mean by rhythm just the pattern of the rhythm, the rhythm don't get too deep too early you might find yourself missing stuff you just want the pattern the pattern is going to help you to figure out or decide on the method you're going to use to calculate the heart rate. Number three, cardiac axis. I've done a video already on cardiac axis. Um, now we're gonna be doing this and this. So, so what we said, um, Sorry. So what we said is that when we get that strip, we quickly want to figure out the pattern. The pattern, we don't want details. We just want to know, is it regular? Is the heart rate regular? Or is it irregular? That's all we want. Because we know that the method that we're going to use to calculate the rate there are three methods that we already know and whether we're going to use um, so for us to choose a method from those three that we're going to use we depend on whether the pattern is regular or irregular like we said that if it's regular you can use the 1500 small box method or the 300 um, big box method to calculate the heart rate but it has to be regular the heart rate has to be regular for you to use any of those two methods coming to when it's irregular we did uh, two videos on this you use the six second method when it's irregular right now let's say now you got that and then you are like okay I know what method to use now let me calculate my heart rate and now surprisingly the heart rate that you get now is more than 100 and you know whether it's regular or irregular at this point so a heart rate that is more than 100 beats per minute we know that is called tachycardia. So what are you gonna do? The next thing that you're gonna do is to classify the tachycardia. And the classification is, is based on the QRS complex. You can either have a narrow QRS complex tachycardia or have a wide QRS tachycardia. Very important to, 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 to get to this uh, step. So now we can add our fourth item there and say 
our approach is like this. Now we are adding a, a fourth. Um, so it's going to be there. QRS complex. What about it? You want to know if it's wide or narrow. And what's the definition of a wide QRS complex? This right here in the middle. So your QRS complex, for it to be, let me just write the, 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 the criteria there. So 0 0.12 seconds, 120 milliseconds. Um, three small boxes. So, if your QRS complex is greater than these, any of these, then it's wide. You want it. You want your QRS complex to be. To be smaller than or to be less than any of these because remember the way i memorize this is that zero for time that for time is zero comma one two seconds but if i want to get to milliseconds i just uh, move the the comma three times one two three the old method and then I get hers in 20 milliseconds. So now by doing that, you already to know two, two numbers or two values. But if you if you, you have more than three small boxes, obviously or automatically, these will also change. So, but in exams, they might ask you what's a, what's the QRS complex or comment on the QRS complex that is 0. 1 to 4 or on a QRS, QRS complex that is um, 4 boxes or on a QRS complex that is 130 uh, milliseconds so you need to know um, those three values like that even though a change in one will automatically cause a change in the other two Okay, so now if you have any of those that are more than you've got a wide QRS complex, if uh, they are they are normal, then you've got sort of like a narrow QRS complex according to this. So why is that important? It's important because once you've got a narrow QRS complex tachycardia that um, is defined as supraventricular tachycardia supraventricular tachycardia and if okay just before i get to that svt or supraventricular tachycardia is an umbrella term there are, uh, there are arrhythmias that are, are regarded as svts the first one is a sinus tachycardia. The second one is an atrial fibrillation. Third one is atrial flutter. The most common ones are those ones, but they also have what they call atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, and they've got this GET jun uh, junctional excitatory um, tachycardia. Right? So that's those are your SVTs. So when someone says the patient has got an SVT or a supraventricular tachycardia, they have not committed to any specific um, arrhythmia. They're just being general. So 
let's say now you've got a white QRS uh, tachycardia. What are the conditions that you find there? So, the most common one is ventricular tachycardia. about 80% of the times. So whenever you've got a patient who's got a white QRS uh, tachycardia, put your money on ventricular tachycardia. Because it's about 80% uh, common. The next one would be SVT plus, remember an SVT alone falls under the narrow QRS complex tachycardia. But if it's coupled now with a left bundle branch block or a right bundle branch block or any other intraventricular collection abnormality, your QRS is gonna widen. So that's why you find it there. But SVT alone should not be here, but it's there because for it to fall under this category, or classification it needs to have one of the three things that I mentioned. One other thing would be um, a pacemaker tachycardia. And others. At our level, it's very important to know this one. Because it's 80% common. It's important to know this, to know this. To know this, the other two is not really, really uh, important. This classification does get complicated, uh, but I'm decided not to make it complicated for the purpose of understanding it because we are also we are still junior doctors. You can classify the um, these uh, these uh, categories like you can classify the narrow QRS complex type card here into. Is the heart rate regular or irregular? Also, this side is the heart rate regular or irregular. Then there are conditions under each. But at this point, I've just mixed everything up. Okay. Now, before we forget, as we all know, the connection system, we've got our SA node, we've got our AV node, then we've got our um, um bundle of his, and we've got our left and right uh, bundle branch. So by definition, if you can draw a line here, from the AV node going up, this is regarded as supraventricular. Anything that is below that line is regarded as ventricular. So these, they all okay above this line. They okay about from the S, from the AV node going up, and then these ones they are okay below. Hence they are called ventricular, um, and this is called supra above the ventricle, supra ventricular tachycardia. Okay, good. Now we have just um, categorized. We have not spoken about any specific condition under this. We have not spoken about a sinus tachy, atrial fibrillation, atrial... Let's say you have done all of this and you know that your patient is here, but you just you don't know whether your patient has got a sinus tachy, atrial fib, or AFL, or any of this. So what's going to help you to, to decide? That's when now we're going to bring in the fourth or the fifth um, criteria whatever you might call it, the P wave. What about the P wave? So to, to decide now, you need to look for, in fact, the, check the presence of the P waves first. The presence, are they there? If they are there, the morphology, and check their relationship to the QRS. Are you having a P wave that precedes the QRS complex all the time or what is happening? That will actually help you to, 
to differentiate this because just briefly if you've got a narrow uh, urs tachycardia and for every p wave for every p your p every p wave is followed by urs and your p wave in lead two is positive and in avr is negative then you can regard that as a as a sinus tachycardia very important you have got p waves that you can see there when it comes to So if you can check my diagram, on every P wave is followed by QRS, every P wave is followed by QRS, every P wave is followed by QRS, even though I've got a, a narrow complex QRS, but I still have P waves that are followed by QRS. So I can safely say I've got a sinus tachycardia in this case. But what if you, 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 you are trying to check for your P waves? But you find things like this, like patterns like this. Never don't focus on my ugly QRS complexes because the point is not about the QRS complexes. So here you see small, I don't know, small bumps or oscillations. These are called F waves. So you don't really pick up a P wave there, but it's just like they are almost all, all of them they are almost equal to each other and it's like oscillations kind of them so that's a fibrillation they call them f waves that's an af but if you go back you check your your, your p waves again on another strip and you find a pattern like this So this would be your, they call this the pattern as sawtooth, a sawtooth. So this would be your HR flatter. So very important to differentiate these, you need your P waves. That's, that's what I'm trying to drive into you guys, that you need your P waves. Check the pattern, the morphology of the P waves, are they there and how are they? And what's the relationship with um, DRS and all of that? I'm not going to get into the other ones complicated and they're not at our level but these are the important ones that i want to, wanted to mention so um like i said the most important ones that we need to bear in mind to always remember is these and this one this one because it's like 80 percent common so it's, it's worth knowing and 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 knowing how it's ecg look like in all of that so guys um Thank you so much for watching. We're gonna meet on another video. I'm not sure what we're gonna be discussing, but we'll see. Thank you for watching.